You're watching Let the Quran Speak, and now we answer your questions. If you have a question, visit our website, quranspeaks.com. Dr. Shabir, the question we have here is, why do scholars disagree on how to practice Islam? How can I decide what to follow when I don't know that much myself? <laughs> yeah, this is the dilemma that a lot of Muslims uh, face, because especially now with uh, the internet world, uh, people go online and they get uh, conflicting fatwas on almost anything. Yeah, and, uh, and there's so many scholars yes. online, right? And then they find the scholars are attacking each other. Yes. So then uh, it worse. might seem like a good spectacle and maybe even entertaining to a certain d degree. But then at the end of the day, like whom do I follow? I see the two scholars debating with each other and each one has apparently good points. So how do I know which one to follow in the end, right? And this can be quite disconcerting uh, because if we're thinking, okay, God is going to judge me for doing the wrong thing and uh, I don't know what is the right thing, so mm -hmm. where do and I And maybe stand? I'm getting misguided. I'm following this person and I could be getting misguided and going in on the wrong path. Exactly, yeah, yeah. So things were simpler before the internet because, uh, you know, when people lived in isolated enclaves and they had one leader to look up to and the one leader said, you know, this is the rule everybody just followed the rule mm -hmm. and uh, you didn't really uh, I mean people generally didn't think that there's something else yes. some, uh, I mean they've always been thinkers in, 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 most, in societies everywhere um, that's the nature of human beings people are different some are thinkers some are just followers right uh, or you might say even blind followers but in the past societies were organized and even those who thought something differently did not have much of an option except to follow the status yes. quo mm -hmm. and go along with what the tribe or what and many people say that when they come to a place like Canada or the United States, that's when they realize, oh, there's so many different ways that people are praying and doing so many different things. Like it kind of blows their mind. Right? Exactly, yeah. exactly. And now suddenly you have the options and then the uh, onus falls on you to, to do some homework and yes, try to find out, out what's the which best is way. the best way and so on. Now, let me put everyone's minds at ease by saying that in the final analysis, you know, God is only going to hold us responsible for what we're capable of. So uh, we are capable, even if we do our best research we're only capable of going so far he, you know if uh, if one knows the arabic language one will have access to arabic discussions arabic textbooks and so on arabic source materials one doesn't know the arabic which is the case with most muslims and then you wouldn't even have access to that except uh, the meager translations which are available of some of the books sometimes the translations too are defective so one is at a really uh, you know disadvantage if one does not know the arabic but even if one knows the arabic like you have to have the time and dedication to study all of these books and people specialize in various fields not everybody's going to be a Muslim scholar every or a scholar of the religion of Islam people are going to be scholars in various fields architecture and you know from architecture architecture to zoology mm -hmm. right in the end God is only going to hold us responsible for what was reasonable uh, in in our case now a good guideline for people is to think that if something is debatable, that means it is not settled. And if it's settled, it wouldn't be debatable. So if you see that scholars are debating over a point, then you know that it's not a settled issue. And let's start with the question, does God exist? If, if the existence of God was something so clearly demonstrable, then uh, there wouldn't be disputes and dis uh, debates between believers and atheists, mm -hmm. right? Everybody would believe the same thing, like two plus two equals four. Nobody can dispute that except somebody who has lost his mind, right? Mm -hmm. But, you know, you, you have these this debates going on because, yes, there are good reasons for believing that God exists, but atheists feel that they also have good reasons for not believing. And that, you know, it's a matter that we can say it's not so entirely clear. Otherwise, there would be no dispute over it. Now, if you bring that all the way down to the finer points of religion where people are disputing, you know, first, we, we started by going in the, like there's a fork in the road. Do you believe that God exists or God does not exist? We took the fork that God exists. Now there's another fork to be debated. Do we go this way of believing in monotheism or we believe in, in the plurality of gods? Okay, we pick the fork of monotheism. We're going on the monotheism direction, right? Now there's another debating point. If it's monotheism, which one of the uh, monotheisms are we going to choose? Are we going to choose Jewish monotheism, Christian monotheism, Islamic monotheism, some other monotheism? Okay, we picked Islamic monotheism. All right, now we're in Islamic monotheism. So now there are forks in the road. Which uh, following of Islam are you going to be on? Are you going to be Sunni, Barelvi, uh, Diobandi? You're going to be uh, Salafi? You're going to be... Uh, My so head many... already hurts thinking about exactly. these options. Uh, and, I even forgot <laughs> and I feel pretty settled in, in my beliefs and still exactly. I'm confused. So how, and I even forgot how many forks <laughs> in the road we've already encountered, right? Yeah. So 
So with all of this in mind, people just have to chill out, take a chill pill, uh, <laughs> you know, be easy going about it. Because again, if the things were so clear, people would not be debating. There wouldn't be so many forks in the road. And uh, because things, you know, you could have gone in so many different directions, uh, the, the one you chose, you have to say in the end, this is by the guidance of God. I'm, you know, satisfied where I am. God has guided me to this. I've used my thinking a little bit. I've tried my best to evaluate and to follow some of the discussions and uh, in the end this is where I am and uh, yes I'm willing to examine another point if somebody has some information that would like to share with me if there's a video out there if there's a book I'd like to read I'd like to watch I'd like to examine I keep an open mind uh, but in the end let's not uh, sweat the small stuff because uh, if the things were uh, settled, they wouldn't be debated. And if they are being debated, that means it's not a settled issue. So people debate all these small things and, uh, you know, they try to prove it from the Quran and the Sunnah as if it is really something that is so clearly settled there. But if it was settled, like, why would Imam Abu Hanifa and Imam Shafi, Imam Malik, Ahmed bin Hanbal, some of our greatest uh, fuqaha in history have different opinions about the same thing because it's not settled. And the earliest scholars, the ones closest to the Prophet Muhammad, seem exactly. to be Exactly. Companions of the Prophet, peace be upon and before, disagreed over issues because the issues were not settled. So don't pretend that the issue is settled when we can see that the issues were not settled uh, and are still being debated today because they're not settled. So yes, you prefer one over the other and you have good reasons. You should have good reasons and uh, pick the one for the good reasons and just in the end, be satisfied with that. Don't quarrel with other people over it. Uh, yes, you can have reasonable discussions, but in the end, pray for your own guidance, my own, my guidance, uh, your guidance, uh, uh, everybody's guidance, and uh, not have the attitude that I'm right, everybody is wrong, I'm going to heaven, everybody else is going to hell, because that itself is a bad attitude. Why do you want people to go to hell? You, I want everybody to be guided and go to paradise. That's the Muslim attitude. All right, we'll leave it at that. Thank you, Dr. Shabir. You're welcome. That was very instructive. I actually learned a lot. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Muslim Media Hub, the new home of Let the Quran Speak. Here we spread positivity and good. We help people experience the beauty of Islam and uh, help them appreciate and understand Muslims. This beautiful building we purchased at cost $2.3 million. Yeah, we've already raised a third of that money and with your help, inshallah, we can pay off the rest. So we're looking for people who can give $1,000 each. If you can be part of the select group, that's amazing. Otherwise, just uh, please give whatever you can every dollar counts it's our collective responsibility to share the message of islam with our fellow human beings please help us continue this good work it's a sadaqa jaria something that will continue to be a benefit to the muslim community long after safiya and i are gone <laughs> <laughs> please support our work at muslimmediahub.com your support is zakat eligible and tax deductible may allah bless you and your loved ones today and always assalamu alaikum assalamu alaikum